the town hall that you did in 2012 with Barack Obama, what impact do you think that had on the Latino vote? What was important is that when the uh, Commission on Presidential Debates decided not to include us or one of us or any other Hispanic yeah. journalist, yeah. for that matter, as a moderator, we, we felt that we needed to speak up. And it ended up being much better because instead of being part of the debates, we created our own debates that because of format, uh, we simply called, called forums. So that's precisely the, what we were discussing, that when we see that something is not right, we can make it right. And then every politician in the United States has to confront the, the questions that the Hispanic community has. And we were fortunate enough to be able to ask those questions directly to the president and to the Republican candidate and whoever comes in the future. The next election cycle, um, when the GOP announced the networks that will air the 2016 presidential debates, Univision is not on that list. So what are your feelings about that when you found that out? And you, we did have about? a debate with, with um, Republicans. I think it was in 2007 or, or in that election. And that was the last time that we did that in, in, this, uh, uh, in this last election. Uh, they didn't want to do that as a whole, um, you know, with all the pre-candidates. Um, we felt that it's a mistake on their part. Of course, their excuse is that we didn't request it and we didn't ask for it on time, so they didn't include it. But, you know, I think that they're afraid of us. And they don't need to be afraid of us. They're afraid of us because they don't understand it. Because they think we're one-dimensional and we're not. Because they're, they don't trust their own answers. If they, if they really uh, trusted their own positions, I don't think they would be afraid to speak out on, on those positions. So what happens now is that they're the ones that are going to lose out, not us, because people are going to continue to watch us, but they're not going to have the opportunity to speak directly to the most important electorate that could get them into the White House. So really, it's a big loss for them, not so much for us. It, it's uh, short-sightedness, and we're hoping that maybe we can do the same thing that we did last time. We are not going to participate in, in a full debate, then we will have something smaller and more direct and more impactful like we did the time before. But, you know, I think when it comes down to it, they, they understand. There are no dummies, and they know that they need the Latino vote, so sooner or later they'll come around and they'll understand that it's necessary to get to Latino voters, they have to come to us. They have to come to Univision. It, it's so simple. It's a prerequisite mm. for them to win the White House. It's like saying, I need your vote, but I'm not going to talk to you. Or they're saying, I need your vote. Oh, but by the way, self-deport. Get out of here. Or I need your vote, but I'm going to deport your mom, your father, your friends, your co-workers, and by the way, your neighbors who are young students. You'll never get the Hispanic vote that mm -hmm. way. So if they don't want to talk to us, they, they now understand that it's their loss and they can continue doing that. Because if they continue doing that, they'll continue losing the White House. And that's, that's something new. We were not used, this is new for us, we were not used to having a little power. And now we have a little power and that's, that's completely new. We can decide, the Latino community can decide who's going to be the next president of the United States. If the 2012 election was decided by 5,000 votes, just imagine that in 2016, 16 million Latinos might go to vote. And in 2020, it's going to be 20 million Latinos. So either they understand that now or they'll keep on losing the White House. And do you think that those issues have become so much more central to the debates in general that... Um, that the mainstream media might be covering it regardless, or is it still important for you and for it to be in Spanish that these issues are covered? Well, I don't think that they know enough about the issues to cover it, and I don't think they care enough about the mm -hmm. issues to cover it. I, I think that now we're beginning to see mainstream media at least pay a little bit more attention to the Hispanic vote. Um, but they usually come to us and ask us about the Hispanic vote, but now at least they're included in some polls, they are included in, 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 in some of, uh, of the questioning when they're talking to politicians about the Hispanic vote, but I don't think that they understand the issues enough. Because like I said before, it's not just the language. It is the topics, it's the content, it's the issues that they need, they need to focus on. Mm -hmm. So I, I do think that, that it's still going to be a necessity. And you know, they're losing out. I think the uh, mainstream media is losing out 
on, on Hispanic voters on, on, a, on a larger audience by not realizing, it's not just politicians that are saying, it's the, it's the media also. They don't understand that there's potentially millions of people that could be watching them that are watching us because of the types of topics that we are giving them in, mm -hmm. in, in Noticiero Univision. And it's something that they could do too. You know, they could hire more Latinos that are more, more culturally identified, or even if they're not Latinos, they can uh, attempt to at least cover and understand some of the issues that affect our community. There's more and more Latinos that are running for office at a local level. I know that the numbers that we get from NALEA, which is the National Association of Latino Elected and Appointed Officials, shows that there is an increase at all levels, from local level to state level, to federal level of, of politicians that are that are running for office. But being Latino is not enough to be elected by Latinos. I think the issues are still more important. It might catch your attention. I think speaking Spanish also catches your attention. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it's where you stand on the issues that is going to decide whether they're going to vote for you or not. Well, and, and also, just see the numbers. Uh, 30 years ago, there were 50 million Latinos, 55 million Latinos in 2015, more than 100 million Latinos in 2050. So the numbers are there, and we're getting more political power, more political representation. For the first time in history, in 2016, uh, we have two Hispanic candidates for the presidency from the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. So something is changing. Something that was impossible just a few years ago is the new normal. And the new normal will be to have a Latino president. I think that's the next step. After Barack Obama won, many Latinos started thinking that, well, that's possible. And if you think of the math, it makes sense. There are more Latinos than African-Americans. African-Americans already have their, their president. I think the next big step historically is when we'll see the first Hispanic president or presidenta. But it's a woman. Exactly. Of course. Exactly. <laughs> Why not? There are Maybe more both. women than men Maybe in this country. Why are there more? Why, are there more, why has there not been a woman president in this country if there are more women voters than men? I think there are more women. Should be right? a presidenta, of course. Of course. <laughs> Good.